you ever have one of those books you keep hearing about and everybody's like, oh, it's so good. And you're like, ah, oh, it's probably just fine. And then you read it, you're like, okay, I finally get it. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be talking about No Heart for a Thief by James Lloyd Doolin. Uh, and this, this was a, a very enjoyable read, I will say right off the bat. Uh, like I said in the intro, this is one I'd been hearing about. I'd gotten uh, an e-arc of this, and uh, as, as you may already know, this book is already out, and I wasn't able to get to it before it was out. Uh, but I've been looking forward to it because I had read the first chapter when the author sent it to me. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this seems really good. Uh, and getting into it, it definitely was. So this one uh, is uh, a, it takes place in a world basically where there are different spirits uh, that essentially give people different powers. So you have people who have the power over like plants and the earth, water and fire and that kind of thing. So we have the elemental magics, but we also have the spirit that's the thief that allows somebody to steal magics. And this is looked at as evil. Uh, if anybody's found out to be a thief, they, they are killed or shunned. And it, that's the, the title of the book, No Heart for a Thief and Only a Grave Will Do, just like the most ostracized, like hated evil type of people. Uh, and so our main character, Kalo, uh, who has the power to do this, uh, is is the, the main source of conflict here. Uh, but we also have a situation where the Gaucht have come across uh, an ocean and invaded. Uh, they have a big empire, they're taking over, and their soldiers also have the ability to steal the, the sp uh, powers from the spirits from these people and then use them against them. And so that's the, the other kind of part of the coin there. We're dealing with this occupied area and people trying to fight back and living under this rule uh, as well. And the, the book starts uh, with Tan, a young girl who is running from some Gauss soldiers uh, and uh, is saved by Kalo. And then she wants to go off and get revenge and he doesn't want her to just go throw her life away. So agrees to train her and we kind of start off from there. Now, the one thing I will say, and uh, I ended up at like a four and a half, which easily rounded up to five on this one, really, really enjoyed it. I was not expecting the book to rely so heavily on flashbacks because it starts in the current timeline and it introduces uh, this main plot line, but the bulk of this story is uh, being told by Kalo about his past. Now, the thing is, those parts are really, really good. So it wasn't a huge issue, although my really my one critique for this is I would have liked to see a little bit more of the current timeline plot move forward in this book, although it's very, very much set up to start kind of exploding forward uh, at the point that we get to. It'll be interesting to see, though, if we do continue to get flashbacks or if this is just the one book that's going to use that as a format because it was a very large portion of the book, uh, but we kind of get through. It's, it's he's telling uh, Tan about his story, his past, kind of explaining things that had happened, and we get to the big moments there where things kind of turned. There's definitely more that could be there, but also at the end of this book, like I said, we're starting to really move forward uh, as well. So some things to talk about uh, with this book in general that I just really quite enjoyed. The way the world is set up and the world building I thought was really interesting because it's using some elements that we've definitely seen before with whether the elemental magic, you know, the imperial forces coming across, invading and occupying. But the idea of having these people able to kind of steal the magic from the people that they're uh, taking over and attacking, uh, it, I thought was really interesting and just kind of seeing how that dynamic plays out as well as having our main character who has this same power that's looked at as evil uh, that he can use using the the spirit that's called the thief and uh, something he has to hide from everyone and in his story as well it's something he has to he has to hide he can't let anybody know once he finds out because you know people would want to kill him or at the very least ostracize him, exile him, and want him nowhere near because it's looked at as such a terrible thing. The series is called Melitu, which is basically the term for someone who is a spirit thief. And so seeing a character who's our main character and, you know, the story we're being told and knowing the fact that they are kind of, in a way, the villain, 
uh, at least that's how they are viewed by their own people, let alone the other, like, main villain, which is uh, the Gaush, the people who are, you know, conquered and all that thing going on. So it's an interesting dynamic going that route. Uh, the, the way the other elemental powers are used, too, I think is, is interesting, and there's enough to it to be uh, a bit more unique uh, with the way it's handled. It's not just typical, like, oh, we can just use these powers. It's built, there's a little more mythos built into it, where it's gifts from the spirits, basically. Uh, we learn about the spirits in the world there, as well as kind of some ideas, like you're, you're reaching into the mist, which is kind of like the ethereal world, uh, in order to gain the power. So there's, there's additional things put there that I thought worked well and uh, made that interesting as well. Uh, also with just seeing the way that the, the world works also, because although we have uh, most of this happening with flashbacks, even those flashbacks start in a time where uh, these people are all, you know, and there's a, we spent, it's, it's a big area. There's multiple countries and groups of people, but I'm being kind of general for the sake of brevity. Uh, but it's, this is already a conquered land. Uh, the conquerors are already here. They're already in control. There is not a whole lot of resistance. You know, they're training people. People, the children have to go to schools to be indoctrinated in their cause. So we're, we're starting there. And it's not a story that's starting with like the invasion happening, people trying to fight it. It's not a story starting with like people trying to rise against them and rebel. It's a story of people who were just living and dealing with that situation, which is I also think a nice fresh way to kind of take that kind of concept. We're not doing the normal starting points in this kind of story. Uh, we're, we're starting at a couple of two different points, our current and our flashback, but we're, we're doing a little bit different where Although that's such a huge part and it's very, very relevant, we're also focusing a lot on this character and their journey while advancing this bigger plot through both the current timeline and the flashback. So I thought it was handled really, really well in a way that's very compelling. And like I said, I normally I would uh, knock it a little bit more, I think, for the probably overuse of flashbacks, if I'm being honest. But uh, like I said, the story being told was very compelling uh, and I enjoyed seeing this character go through figuring out who they are, figuring out how they fit in, and really dealing with thinking their the power, this power they have is evil, and that they must be evil, but they don't want to be. And, you know, that kind of internal conflict with all of these big external conflicts going on uh, gives it a nice story that definitely feels complex uh, instead of being one note if we were just focusing on one of those things. And it's also Kalo, who in our current timeline, is is older and he's just off on his own trying to run away from everything kind of being pulled back in but also seeing some of himself in this young person who yeah, he kind of just happens upon him uh and trying to you know teach her to hopefully choose a better and a different path uh because he doesn't want her to end up dead or in just as a crappy of a situation internally as he is and so i thought that also worked really well also. This is definitely, uh, it's a it fairly quick read, uh, not super long, and just uh, really draws you in and keeps you going for the story. I'll definitely be interested to see uh, what the future installments in this series are. It's definitely one I'll be keeping an eye on. And yes, I do get uh, why this one has been so popular. It's one that I quite enjoyed as well. And it did a lot of uh, great things throughout with both the characters, the world building, like I said, and just the different levels of conflict, uh, both with our internal character conflict, the external conflicts, large and small, them figuring out how to live with uh, their own people, with the people in the world around them, as well as the conquerors, that kind of thing. All of it meshed together to make this nice, very complex tale that's delivered in a pretty succinct way overall in a shorter novel. And so this is definitely a series. I think it'll be really, really great to see how it continues to build. And like I said, the way this one ends, it's setting up for quite a lot to happen in the next book. So I am excited to see it. Those really, though, are my thoughts on No Heart for a Thief by James Lloyd Doolin. Definitely let me know your thoughts. I know this one has been uh, getting the rounds kind of, so I'm sure there's plenty of people who have read it. Uh, so if you have read it, let me know your thoughts. If you agree or disagree with anything that I said, or uh, if you're interested in it and we're going to be checking it out, definitely let me know as well. Always curious to see that. That's it for this one, though. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description, as always, for the Wizardly Do It Discord. If you want to chat books, whether this book, other books, any books, really anything at all, it is a lot of fun and we would love to have you. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe. Hey.